What has been happening in the 20 plus years has really stood me in good stead for COVID-19, where we really have not just one pandemic, that is the disease itself, but also the infodemic and also the geopolitical pandemic. More recently, you see a lot of racial tensions actually coming to a boil in America, but that has now spread to much of the Western world in sympathy. And I think it's really tugging at the underlying force of inequalities more generally. So when you have all these forces, social, geopolitical, informational, and the disease itself, it becomes rather difficult to try and provide good evidence as a scientist to those who are in the authorities, not only in Hong Kong, in mainland China, but also in different countries. Whatever I have gone through with my team in the last 20 plus years, we are now squeezing every last drop of experience uh, and know-how to try and help all of us get through the next year. I'm sure that in the ever-present tug of war between microbes and humans, human beings will always continue to suffer from, but at the same time, perhaps marvel at the ingenuity of the microbial world and evolution. This is a never ending struggle and we just need to recognize this as part of our ecology and try to structure our world and our lives accordingly. So hopefully, as part of the new normal post COVID-19, we would as a human race learn to live with these kinds of uncertainties and threats and challenges. And this really perhaps calls on us to live more sustainably and to reorganize ourselves as a global community in such a way that would help us deal with future challenges because as this pandemic has shown, the microbial world extends into human disease, extends into the integrity of health systems, which then gets into also livelihood issues. And the whole idea of solidarity, social consent, all come into how you would counter a pandemic. The more successful we are with the first wave of the pandemic, the paradox is that the more susceptible we remain for the probable second wave and the possible third wave, by virtue of the fact that very few of us would have antibodies. And therefore, we still remain very susceptible. So you almost become a victim of your own success in terms of being extra vigilant and really trying to maintain this kind of equilibrium until a vaccine becomes widely accessible. If we could do better, we should be testing much more, not only in the public sector, but also leverage the flexibility and the adaptability of the private market through incentives and perhaps even regulations. So testing and specifically using the private market would be one. And two would be really revving up your contact tracing infrastructure from hiring more of these people, from training them up to making sure that we do test runs before the really big wave might hit. The test and trace would be the two things that Hong Kong still has quite a bit of room to improve.